Hey everyone, and welcome back. I'm Anton, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to set up USB Loader GX to play your favorite Wii and GameCube games. I'm going to cover the extreme basics to the more advanced side of things, so if you don't even have the CIOSs installed, I'll show you how to do that here. Now before we begin, don't forget to hit the subscribe button to see future videos, just like this one, and let's get started. So, to use USB Loader GX and proceed with this installation, you will need a soft modded Nintendo Wii that has the homebrew channel and the latest CIOS installed. You are going to be sticking with the original white Wii for this tutorial, so if you are using a Wii U, some things may be different. You will need a USB drive or flash drive, the bigger the better, but this Lexar 64 drive is what I personally use and is what I recommend because of the size and price. You will need an SD card. I know that you can just use the SD card alone to store the games and homebrew files, but having both is more flexible and easier to manage, which is why we're going to be using both for this tutorial. Additionally, you'll need a Wiimote like this one. The Wii Motion Plus versions might not work correctly for some of this tutorial, so I recommend that you have an original Wiimote like this white one. Now, if you don't have the homebrew channel installed on your Wii, then definitely go down to the description to see some videos and some links that will definitely help you out with that. It's not a difficult installation and doesn't take too long either. The CIOS is basically what will allow you to play the Wii and GameCube games. Go down to the description and you will download the USB loader package. In this folder, it should contain two folders. Once installed, you'll have to unzip the folder using WinWire or 7-Zip. Once extracted, take the two folders that are inside the folder and drop them into your SD card. If you already have some of these files, or even the apps folder, then just merge them together or you can pick and choose. Now eject the SD card and insert it in your Wii. Now boot up your Wii, go to the homebrew channel, and you should see a couple of different applications. So click on the D2X CIOS installer app, and press load. And you should see this menu appear. Next, you will need to set the correct settings. Doing them incorrectly can cause problems or even break your system, so do be cautious. So first press continue, and then enter the following information on screen. You can use a d-pad in order to change the values. Once you have continued and press A twice, then you will see this screen where it will show you the entire installation process and if anything went wrong. If something is wrong, don't worry as you can still continue and it shouldn't cause that much of a problem. So next, once you have seen the installation process, we're going to do this again. Then once finished, the same thing will happen once again with the installation and the blocks. And then press A to return and enter the final values. Run it again and exit once done. And now you should be able to load games up in USB Loader GX. So what are WBFS files? Well, they are essentially an executable Wii file that USB loader and also emulators can read. GameCube files are usually .iso or .gcn. If your Wii game file is a .iso file, that means we need to convert it into a WBFS format. To do this, we need to download either Wii Backup Manager for Windows or with GUI if you have a Mac. So just select where your file is and it will easily convert it. You can also use this to set up your Wii folder structure very easily too. And we'll talk about how you can do this manually also. Now if you didn't download it before, 
as part of their D2X CIOS installer section of this video, then just go down to the description and download the USB loader package. Remember, if you have any of these applications or even folders already, then just either merge them or replace them. Or you can just pick and choose which ones you want. There also will be a couple of different alternative links as well, depending on your device. The apps that we are going to be focusing on are Nintendo and USB Loader GX. You need them both if you want to enable GameCube game support. If you already have Nintendo installed, then you just need to install USB Loader GX. In case you are wondering, this specific version of USB Loader GX is a modified version that allows for support of GameCube games. Other versions will not have this feature, so if you want to replace the USB Loader GX that doesn't have the support with this one, you can totally do so. Now for the USB, we are going to be putting some games in it. Remember, in the USB folder, there is no games in it just because of the piracy measures and also the file size. So as you can see, there are two folders, one called games and one called WBFS. Your GameCube games go in the games folder, and your WBFS, which are Wii games, go in the WBFS folder. We will talk about paths later on in this video in case you want to change the directories and are having a bit of trouble with that. But these are the ones that USB Loader looks for. The game folders should have a format like this. Game name and then a square bracket, game ID and a square bracket closing it off. In both of the folders, I do have an example file just so you can see how the structure is supposed to look like. These are not games and you cannot use them in USB Loader GX. The game ID doesn't really matter to run the game. It's only the structure that is most important. The loader looks for the box art using the game ID. You can find the game ID on the game TDB site, which is an archive for all box arts. So there are no games to be found on this site. And just in case USB Loader GX isn't downloading the box art, you can also download it manually and just put it in the config images folder on your SD card, which should be created once you load up USB Loader GX and try to download box art. Now we're going to go into USB Loader GX. To do this, go to the Homebrew channel and then click on the icon that says USB Loader GX and press load. This is the menu of USB Loader GX. As you can see, it's quite simple and looks very similar to the Wii menu. You can set box art by going to this button here and clicking at the box. This will bring up a prompt asking if you would like to download the files. And once you select yes, it will begin downloading and it will download the 2D, 3D and disc art. Now for the settings, if you want to copy them down, then just pause the screen to do that. I'm just going to go through them really quickly, just so you can see everything here. I recommend you just go through all the settings and tweak them to your liking. There's a lot of cool stuff to take a look at, such as the themes and GameCube game settings, which you'll find where it says Nintendo. Don't. If you're running into the problem where you don't see any games appearing, what you'll have to do is make sure that your USB port number is set to the correct one. So just experiment with that. And like I mentioned before, you have the paths. So you can just go to the paths section, and as you can see, these are all of my directories. You can set them to whatever you want. USB Loader GX can either be installed as a homebrew channel application or as a channel on the Wii. These files are included in the USB Loader Pack file folder that you can find in the description. This version of USB Loader is also a modded version that does allow support of GameCube games, although it does offer quite a bit more features as you have tabs in the top that you can categorize GameCube and Wii games separately. There is also a WiiWare tab, but I don't know how to get that working. If you'd figured this out, then let me know in the comment section. The Homebrew Channel app mode means that USB Loader GX is not physically installed on your Wii. It is only read on your SD card or your USB, and it is launched from the Homebrew Channel. The full channel mode means that USB Loader GX channel is copied on the Wii internal memory. It appears as a channel directly on the Wii system menu, and you don't need the channel on the USB or SD card in order to launch it. 
Now to install this channel, what you're going to do is go to the multi mod manager application in the homebrew channel, which should be in the USB loader pack file. Go down to where it says wad installation and then select the wad that you want to download. In this case, it will be the USB loader GX one. Do be cautious when installing this as if there is a power outage or a problem, it could potentially break your console. This file is safe and should download without any errors or problems. Once downloaded, then you can exit out of the multi-mod manager and exit out of the Wii menu where you should see it right there. Press it to open it and it should work perfectly fine and allow you to easily access USB Loader GX. But you do need a USB or SD card to store the configuration files and games. To update the loader if you want, you can reinstall a new channel over the old one or use the loader's internal online update feature. Now it's time for the frequently asked questions. These are questions that I have gotten from the USB Loader GX 2019 tutorial, and I'm going to try my best to answer them and provide solutions. First question, what if the game is larger than 4 gigabytes? So if the game is very large, then the Wii Backup Manager or WIT GUI can actually split the WBSS files into parts. This is what I had to do with Super Smash Bros. Brawl and Xenoblade Chronicles due to them being 7GB each. And this is because FAT32 drives do not support files larger than 4GB. Where can I download games? Well, USB Loader's purpose is to back up your own game files, that way you don't need to use disks. If you want, you can also rip games by selecting the plus button in USB Loader GX, while a disc is inserted. This I haven't had any luck with, and it takes a tremendously long time, which is why I recommend downloading games online. I cannot tell you exactly where to find them due to YouTube policy, but definitely DM me either on Twitter or Discord if you need any help with anything we homebrew related. And we do have a Discord community just in case you want to help each other out too, and it also has announcements and other cool stuff. Why is my Wii restarting every time I start up a game? Well, this has to do with either the CIOS not being installed, or a game file that is broken or not compatible. I'd recommend you try the game on the Dolphin emulator, as that is probably the best way to test out if the game works or not. How about other games that are not just GameCube or Wii? Well, there are a lot of emulators for the homebrew channel. You have NES emulators, N64 emulators, Super Nintendo, and even Commodore 64. There are a lot of different cool emulators that you can play a whole bunch of different games with different configurations. So do check out a video that's in the description if you're interested. And that's about it for all of the questions. Anyway guys, that brings us to the end of the video. If you did enjoy it, then don't forget to hit the subscribe button to see future videos heading your way, including more tutorials such as this one. And don't be afraid to contact me like I said before, and also comment down below if you have any issues or problems. If I cannot answer all of the comments, then definitely help each other out too. And I will see you guys in the next one.